Now let's see the topic of arguments and inference. So I'll just uh, tell you the definitions first. If a set of premises, premises means these are all the propositions which are assumed to be true. Okay. So whatever given here, we generally assume that they are true. They are called as premises. Yield another proposition Q. Yield means we derive it. Okay. This is this Q is called as conclusion, which means if some propositions are given and if they are assumed to be true, under that assumption, if you are able to derive one more proposition right then the whole process is called as argument so they will be giving you some statements from that statement you will be deriving some other statement then this entire thing is called an argument okay now if you want to see an example let us say i have p implies q let us say p is if today is sunday then q is today is holiday okay if today is sunday today is holiday P means if today is Sunday, Q means today is holiday. You can also write it like this P or negation Q. Okay. Okay. Negation P or Q, right? Huh. Now let's say there is one more premise. If you assume that this is a premise and if I assume one more premise, today is not a holiday. What does this mean? If today is Sunday, today is holiday and today is not a holiday then what can you derive you can derive that today is not sunday are you getting this if this one is true which means today is not holiday is true then if this entire thing is also known to be true if this one is true then how will this one be true only when this one is false if this one is false which means if p is false then definitely negation p will be true so you can draw one conclusion which is true got it so this is so okay if you are not able to understand this example leave it for now we shall see more examples later but what i mean to say is if you assume that there are some statements which are true there are some you know propositions which are true they are called as premise premises from these premises we will try to derive some other premise okay fine that is called as conclusion this entire process is called as argument an argument is said to be valid if the conclusion q can be derived from the premises by applying the rules of inference now what are rules of inference we shall see them generally we follow some rules of inference then we are going to get the conclusion now an argument is denoted by p1 p2 p3 so on and then this symbol and q so or you can also denote it like this generally we are going to use this p1 p2 p3 so on pn then conclusion this this is a representation of an argument okay now if this argument is true then we can also write it this way by writing like this we can say that this conclusion is derived from this you know premises okay Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%, but all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. 
so you don't have to have any collateral which which means without any security now you can get education loan getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90 percent success rate 99 percent success rate and these are all the destinations that we guide the students to so we guide students to any country that you want to go so now it is not just usa we guide to uk germany australia canada so we guide we guide students to all the countries we work with all the destinations and if you are interested in going abroad you have to just drop us a message on this whatsapp number 9494554454 okay thank you